We are back. This is part two of the On The Page podcast 2021 Logline competition. Thank you so much for being here. Adeep Desai. Adeep Desai is joining us. Hello, Adeep. Who dat? Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> So let me tell you about Adeep Desai. Adeep is a TV writer with credits as a staff writer on the Goldbergs. He's a freelancer on Mira Royal Detective and two Netflix animated series and one with DreamWorks and one with Nickelodeon. So wait a minute. There's yeah, so two, wait, I'm <laughs> wait, two so Netflix animated series, but one's with DreamWorks. And yes, one's Nickelodeon? that's right. OK, I got it right. Sorry, it's, it's the it's hard to write in a bio and I sometimes I just write two Netflix series ah. secret Netflix series because I'm not allowed to talk about them Ooh. you know all they're very top secret see secret is good that, yeah. that means it's you know everybody's buzzing about it yeah he's also I'm not done with your bio because there's a lot here he's also a BAFTA breakthrough artist runs the LA TV writers group is an advisor at Sundance and is now the director of brand management and marketing uh, for title, roadmap right? writers. Ooh. There we go. He is an alum of the Disney ABC TV writing program and has been a regular at the on the page podcast for somewhere between 13 and 100 years as a co host and guest. Thank you so much for being here. Adeep. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yay. It's the time of the year to crush some log lines that's right and now remember some, some dreams now some <laughs> that's nice that's <laughs> nice um people are actually seeing you right now we're on youtube yeah. okay as well as on you know people listening where they get their uh podcasts normally sure um we are going to be uh talking about our favorite 15 we got 85 submissions 26 of which in part one, I already went through, yeah. they were great ideas, but they just needed some tweaking here and there. And we talked about why. Now we're going to talk about what remains. I can't do the math on it. And we've picked 15 each and we're going to see where oh, our yeah. 15 meet and yeah. where part. And then from that, we're going to pick a winner. So I already know you're, you're going to call out the ones that I liked and 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 uh te yeah tease me about it because it's i'm so obvious like every time really like, yes there there are a few that you uh, like every year like i knew you were gonna <laughs> you know i'm obvious too so you can you can i you don't can think call so. me no out you you hide it a lot better than i do i'm just like ooh, there's a music one and then it's like <laughs> <laughs> you know so did you see that pat snuck one in pat um, my, my husband i had quite a reaction to that one huh. did, you, did you did he come in did he like get on your computer and like add that he added it like he was alph alphabetizing them for us and then he added his and I'm like dude I don't even know if it counts because it's way after the deadline and, you know, I would have done the same thing yeah okay. oh yeah absolutely well, I we'll would have taken that you know we'll see if it even makes our top 15 if it doesn't we may not even talk about it Sorry. He's bold. He put his name. I would have put a really crazy fake name <laughs> and then you would never know. And then 10 years later, I'd be like, I was crimey Mick Panterson Jones. Well, from, I was, you know, if it was a funny one, I was surprised it wasn't a funny one. I know that he didn't go for that. Yeah. He, maybe he really wants to win this. He really liked the idea. Well, anyway, we're teasing too oh, much. I want to talk about that one because it's bonkers. I have a bonkers page. Oh, you have a bonkers yes. page. I okay. have five, five that are on the bonkers page. Okay. So we'll start with our, our favorite first 15 first okay. and then go to the bonkers page. Okay. So I'm going to share the screen ah. and then every time we talk about one i will find it alphabetically this, okay this could not this, work we'll see we'll see let me you know okay so here it is i'm gonna hide it if i hide it can you see it i cannot see it okay if i do that can you see it yes i can okay i'm hiding it and then i'll bring it up <laughs> Technology. You're, you're sharing the screen for the benefit of people on YouTube, right? Right. That's the, okay. Exactly. Okay. So, Adeep, what was your first among the 15? 
I struggled. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hard to pick the best one because they're always at that level. It's like there's always a bunch. Mm -hmm. um, I would say my favorite one was Joe Beatty's. Joe Beatty's. Okay. The so true go story. Joe Beatty. Oop, I got to bring it up here so people can see it. Here we go. Joe Beatty. Here we go. Yeah. Go for it. The true story of a black composer who, desperate to achieve the title of Chevalier, spies for Marie Antoinette against her most ardent political enemy during the French Revolution until his actions imperil the love of his life. Yeah. Okay. All right. So what did you like about it? Um, I like music things. I like Marie Antoinette in particular is a very interesting figure and um this is a story that nobody knows about probably mm -hmm. so it's very fascinating and and then the fact that like he's he's like going against he's like working with their enemy and then his his you know the love of his life could die it's like there's so much at stake like the country of france is at stake and he's at the middle of it which is kind of mm -hmm. rad so i don't know that's what i like about it um, I would say, Joe, that um, you in a log line, you don't need to say it's a true story, especially yeah. when we've got um, Marie Antoinette. It might be that somebody asks you, hey, is that true? Um, so you could start with a black composer desperate to achieve the title of Chevalier spies for a Marie Antoinette against her most ardent political enemy during the French Revolution until his actions imperil the love of his life. Yeah. Okay. And, and the true story thing, um, I went back and forth on it. And then I thought, you know what? I think if you were going to send this to a producer, mm -hmm. you would want it, that in there mm -hmm. because they, they'd be like, ooh, IP. And, and <laughs> it's just that, just for that reason. I um, get it. I get it. I, I guess but, like, uh, yeah. I'm a bit of a logline purist. Like I love yeah. like, logline standing on its own, you yeah. know? Oh no. I mean, yeah. Usually I'm really a stickler, but um, this time I was like, well, I like that idea. It's like, it does need a little bit of work, which is taking the true story out. But I was like, fine either way. I'm going to go to my first, my first fave. So and... how does this work? So like I pick, is this like the blacklist where like we each have 15 votes and then we see who has the most votes? No, no, oh, no, no, okay. no. We're going to have like, you're going to pick your 15. Okay. I'm going to mention my 15 and somewhere in it, it might match. Yeah. So okay. like, so I guess actually I, I, I said no, but I mean, yes. So that like, if, if you and I, <laughs> if you and I both liked the same one, well, that's going to put them up at the top to begin with, but we could okay. end up having 15 completely different ones. We'll see. Are you going to tell me uh, if I pick one of yours, like you sunk yeah. my battleship? Okay. Absolutely. Cool. Absolutely. So you might've picked this one. So Alan Jenkins, this was uh, my, one of my favorites. Oh, um, interesting. Alan is from Boston, Massachusetts. Um, Alan it has actually done really well this year. This is not with this script. He just, he just finished the script, but with, with the other scripts, he was winner of the Screencraft True Story and Public Domain Screenwriting Competition, winner of the grand prize in Faden Awards, true story biopic competition and he was chosen for the 20 uh 2020 21 blacklist google storytelling fellowship all this year oh, that so, thing mm -hmm. yeah so congratulations alan um this is for his newest project when a woman's estranged father develops dementia he reveals clues to his past life as a spy forcing her to unearth family secrets and solve an international mystery and I like its simplicity, but what I like is that it's the dementia that yeah. is forcing this man to, he's revealing clues about his past life as a spy, whether he meant to or not. Yeah. So I think it's a really killer idea yeah. and it's a really interesting way into a, a thriller. Um, yeah. So I, I like, I, I like, I think it packs a yeah. lot of punch. That one's really good. Um, I did, I think part of my issue with a lot of the log lines is, you know how they like sort of start to form a pattern where you're like, everyone's estranged and, and you know, and it's, um, it's really interesting. Like 
these primal things that we want to write about and it's just how you how you uh, frame it but yeah i liked that one's so well written uh the spy thing is great uh what do you believe what details are you going to believe that he says like you're just on a wild goose chase using his his brain as the the map and who knows yeah yeah who knows what can happen um yeah that's a good one okay so what's what's your next one i had um oh am i supposed to say if that was on my list or not well i guess it wasn't right it was really okay. yes no that gives it two votes okay okay so two votes all right okay so what was the next okay. one then you're gonna laugh um what? david brandon I'm not gonna laugh because I like that one too. <laughs> that gets two votes as well. It's okay, good. Let's, let's go to it and you can right. read it. It's okay. uh, David Brandon from Los Angeles. It's a half hour TV comedy. When two big time male rappers reveal that they've been in a secret romantic relationship, they must navigate their sexuality and competing career ambitions all in the public eye. That's yeah. juicy. Yeah. And it's, you know what? It's a half hour TV comedy. Yeah. That's the weird part. <laughs> no, but I like that because what it does is it's something that we can bite off every week, right? Yeah. We've got <clears throat> these two characters that are big time male rappers. That's interesting yeah. to follow as it's is. like Biggie and Tupac are in a, having an affair kind of thing. It's like, exactly. yeah. So we've got that romantic relationship yeah. as a secret, right? And they're navigating their sexuality and competing career ambitions right so yep. so we've got a lot to dip into um mm -hmm. every week actually not as not a secret they're revealing it so uh yeah. yeah i think it's nice and simple but also high concept and it it definitely gives you something you can do in a half hour tv comedy okay thank you david great two two votes mm -hmm. there okay so um i'm just going in alphabetical order on my list here camille Brian from Vancouver um, in, here we go. And I love this one. And now, of course, you'll know why. Ready? Oh, yes. This is uh, an animated mm -hmm. film. OK, mm -hmm. ready? In character land, a trope a day keeps the writers at bay. But one marginalized character wants to write their own story and defy the scripted life. I mean, come on. It's I Wreck have it Ralph. To love that. I mean, to me it was Wreck It Ralph. Because yeah. that's that's what he's that's what he's doing. He has a job and he does it every day and he's a marginalized character and he's like he's sick of being the bad guy. And so he's trying to show everyone that he's a good guy. So I was feeling very much that that part of it. Oh, I wouldn't say they're too close. If you think about every animated film, it's somebody who wants to bust out of their sort of prescribed role and do something new or go somewhere, you know, and prove themselves. So I don't know. I mean, look, this is, this isn't her trying to, the character trying not to be a bad guy. Mm -hmm. It's um, a trope a day keeps the writers at bay. So I want to see an animated movie where you see characters who have to do the same cliches oh. all the time. And one character wants to write their own story and defy the scripted life. I don't know. I love it. I love did, the way she phrased it too. Did, did you, um, were you getting kind of free guy vibes from it too? It doesn't matter. Oh. You know, it just doesn't matter because it's still another, to me, it's, it's a, it's a world I haven't seen yet, hmm. you know? And Free Guy, yeah, is Wreck-It Ralph, right? More than, and yet they did Free Guy and it was great. Did you like Free Guy? Love Free Guy. Yeah, yeah. So Camille gets my vote, but not a deeps. No. Nope. he's a party pooper. Okay. That's right. All right. What's what's your next one, Adip? Um, da, 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 da. I liked this one but I have a caveat with it. <laughs> what is it? That I think it should be a novel. Okay, what's the log line, Adib? Uh, J.D. Ellaby. J.D. J.D., J.D., J.D. Mine is hey! in a, mine Two is votes. not in a, a, oh yeah? 
Yeah, I liked it yeah. too. Yeah, so JD's is JD's from Mansfield, Texas. Okay. Um, it's a feature. Mm -hmm. Torn from her parents and placed on a lunar outpost, a courageous 16 year old rallies a group of teenage rebels to take up arms against the mining federation that holds their families captive. How is that more a novel than, than a movie? Uh, I, here's my, my reasoning. Again, if you write the novel, you get, you have the IP. Uh -huh. So that novel blows up. Cause that's going to, that would be a good novel. And that could be, be a whole novel series. And then you also write the screenplay for it and you just make all the money. What's happened to you, Adib Desai? What has I have happened? Been, I have been broken by the town. You're... I only talk about IP. Oh my God. Although, but that's, that's a, a great really, idea. That's it's a, a great really idea. Good YA. They want like different YA shit. And this is different enough that it could, it could be huge. So that's my... I'm like, just grab some money is what I'm saying. Um, okay, so so, but it's gonna be a great screenplay. Yeah. Also, that I'm not saying it's not gonna be a great screenplay. I'm just like, if, get paid twice is what I'm saying. It's a really, really <laughs> well done as far yeah. as the we've got the setup. Torn from her parents and placed on a lunar outpost. We've yep. got a character, a courageous 16 year old. We've got the adventure. Rallies mm -hmm. a group of teenage rebels yeah. to take up arms against enemy, the mining federation. Mm -hmm. that stakes holds mm -hmm. their families captive yep. that is all it's there. all there yep. yeah yeah good work jd thank mm -hmm. you very much all right um let's see i guess the next one on my list i love that we're agreeing on so many three out of four right yeah um the next one was i don't know how to say this is it sesca major c-e-s-c-a what do you think? Seska Major from Reading? Oh, yeah, Seska's. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Oh, my God. I didn't show. I got so excited, you know, reading the last one that I don't think I showed it. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. Okay, you guys, this was JD's. Okay. This was JD's that we like so much. Now we're going to go to Seska. Oh. And that's that log line is 33 words. Ah, very nice. Very nice. Okay, so Seska Major, Reading, Berkshire, England. And she writes, she writes, um, this is a TV series. Earnest team leader Lexi's world is upturned when an alien on a dark mission poses as a glamorous new colleague at the tired water park where she works, threatening to take away her friends, job security crush, and even her life. So other than naming, because I'm not a big one on naming. Yeah. So it would be um, an earnest team leader's world is upturned when an alien on a dark mission poses as a glamorous new colleague at the tired water park where she works, threatening to take away her friend's job security crush and even her life. So this is a TV series. And I just felt like this could be really fun and sort of darkly funny. I yeah. love setting something at a tired water park. Yeah. I love that there's an alien on a dark mission there. It's just mm -hmm. weird. And yeah. I just feel like there's a lot to reach into, but it is a little wordy, you know, calling calling it out by name. Um, yeah, that was my, you know? yeah, that was my yeah. issue. But also I was, and maybe I was just tired dad, but I was, when they, when they say crush, mm -hmm. so like the the alien is going to, steal her partner um yeah i don't know why that bumped me when i read it but it makes sense you now. don't like the word crush no no crush is fine it was like in, in a way like the glamorous colleague I, I thought oh is she attracted to this glamorous colleague and is there like a thing happening with them and and then i was like where's the crush in it i my brain went that's, like 10 that's steps good deep. like a log line for a tv series should make you ask well, how do they get there 
you know, instead of there's no practical way that it could get there, you know, mm -hmm. like you have, to, if, if you're already going like, what, how could an, how can an alien take away your, your crush? Good. You know, watch the show and find out. Yeah. I was just thinking like, it, like she's attracted to the alien too, is what I was getting out of it. Maybe, because, you know, I don't know. I don't know why. <laughs> Adip, what's your next one? Uh, this one, okay. Another caveat. This was on my bonkers list because you, this movie will never get made. And, uh, but I, th I think it's one of those that could get on the black, like the real blacklist because it just has that kind of log line. Do you, so it's, it's still one of your top 15. Yeah, so I think so. Because I, I, I you thought love it, was... it even though it's even though it's bonkers. Well, let me think. Okay, I'm gonna that I'm not gonna make that one of my top ones because of what I just said. But I, I want. What, what's wrong? What's to... wrong with a bonkers idea? You know, like this is not a selling. This is not about what's gonna sell. This is yeah. about what's interesting to the... you know to to maybe watch and and yeah. it's a really well written log line. Yeah, and this will be this is pure fun. Okay. What so is this it? is what it's Tommy's. Uh, I said Tommy's, even though it's Tommy S. Um, I'll wait for you to pull it up. I I don't have a Tommy. I have Thomas Morhoff. Hold the phone. Oh no no no! I do have it. Yeah. I do. Sorry. Here we go. Tommy S. Okay. Going down. Look at all these, you guys. So many. I know. Okay. There it is. All right. So yeah. uh, Tommy S is from a city. A, a city. <laughs> and this oh, is a I, format. You know what? I did like this. I did like this. It almost went on my top 15. Oh, see? So I, I totally, totally get it. Okay. Why don't you read it? Okay. After the box office triumph of The Empire Strikes Back in 1980, Harrison Ford is recruited against his will by the CIA to find and eradicate a reincarnated Adolf Hitler, and the actor turns spy must achieve this goal while simultaneously filming his next movie, Raiders of the Lost Ark. It's uh, it is bonkers. So, it's bonkers. fun. Yeah. Like, look, if John Malkovich can be made, why can't this movie be made? Anything I get. Yeah, I I don't know what um what i i don't know like it what would stop it maybe harrison but someone will play young harrison and yeah it's funny go, yeah it's and funny. you'll have luke i mean like a young mark hamill will be in it it'll be crazy you know what i wish i had put Carrie it Fisher. back on my 15 on my top 15 i should have after the box office triumph of the empire strikes back in 1980 harrison ford's recruited against the will by the by against his will by the cia to find and er eradicate a reincarnated Adolf Hitler. You know why I didn't put it on? It's because of its sort of run on nature and the actor sure. turned spy must achieve the goal yeah. while simul That's simultaneously filming his next movie Raiders of the Lost Ark. So I think I got petty yeah. on it. Yeah. But I I sense. do like it. Now people might go, "Now wait a minute, Pilar Alessandra, you wouldn't let me do Raiders of the Lost Ark 19 like I wanted to. I was uh, going to write that movie and you said no, right. it's somebody else's IP." Right. And it is. This is not about those IPs. This is not about movie ideas that have already been made and are yeah. owned by people. This is about imagining that Harrison Ford was really a CIA, was really recruited by the CIA yeah. and had to eradicate a reincarnated Adolf Hitler. It is a completely made up story that just happens to integrate a real life character who happens to have been making a real movie, yeah. but it is not that movie or any version of it. So yeah, that's yeah. why I'm like, yeah, go ahead and do it. And then try it's, and, you know, yeah. battle people to make sure that, you know, we can use Harrison Ford's name. This is the script that gets like um, attention from like a manager. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, what else do you have? And you're like, I have all these normal things <laughs> <laughs> that you actually could potentially sell. So Tommy, we want you to write this. Okay. Yeah. Um, even if it's like, I don't know, half hour comedy pilot version of it. 
No, I, I really, I think it's, I think it's really good. I'm going to put yeah. both of us on here as liking it. Okay. okay. So the next one on my list um, is Craig T. Williams. Craig. It's for a TV show and I liked it's high concept simplicity. So Craig oh, T. Yeah. Williams, he's in New York City. Um, tired of waiting for Mrs. Wright, an emotionally stunted 40-year-old man decides to have a baby on his own to be the, fa the father he never had. And I just thought we've seen versions of this with yeah. women all yeah. the time. But the idea of a guy tired of Mrs. Wright decides to have a baby on his own to be the father he never had this is a TV show. It dips. You, it's very simple, mm -hmm. yet it's got a twist to it, and you, it dips into certain themes. So I liked it. I thought it did its its job really well as a as a TV idea. Yeah. Do you like it? I was on. I was. It was in my on the fence um, ah. list, mm -hmm. but I, I was like, I read it a few times. I was like, yeah, that's okay they're gonna give an emotionally stunted four-year-old man a baby um okay let's try but, now who's gonna you know he decides to have a baby on his own nobody said anything about adoption true yeah so, yeah. so how he how he does that could be interesting itself in the pilot and yeah. who and who comes along with that as far as yeah who's gonna be a like biological mother yeah yeah i mean it, it's it's funny it's like um it's almost uh, with a different motivation. It's similar to catastrophe because they, you know, they have the one night stand and she's mm -hmm. pregnant and they have to decide whether to keep it and be together. And it's like, yeah. it's sort of similar kind of math where it's like, oh boy, what are we yeah. going to do here? But, yeah. Yeah. And I, I think we have seen versions of this again with women or yeah. with couples where it's an accident, but it's interesting. I don't think we've ever seen a man who's choosing to do this as you know, a single man. So yeah, I, I think it's, I think it's fun. And also Craig, congratulations. He was accepted into the Warner media access writers program. He ah, is a, cool. a long time client. I'm very proud of him. That's a good um, one. Yeah. 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 So what's the next on your list? Mm. Oh yes. This I thought was pretty badass. Um, it's Robert Singley's. Robert Singley. Mm -hmm. Okay, Robert Singley. Okay. And okay, go for it. He's from San Jose, and I don't know what the format is, but who gives a shit? Uh, I think it's a. I think it's a a feature. It seems like a feature, but it also could be a show. Okay. Um, when an ex NSA NSA hacker discovers that the US government is secretly using a machine learning program he wrote to silence dissidents, he uses his skills to shut down the program while being pursued by a covert government agency. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's so what that was silence it, it that's he wrote the program that they're mm -hmm. using to like shut down democracy. Mm -hmm. And that made me mad and I was like <laughs> okay I'm with you man so like I'm on that journey um yeah I liked it I thought it, and it's not overwritten it's very tight um yeah and, and you don't need to name the covert agency it's going to be some shadow group anyway and yeah I, I liked it the reason I didn't put it on my list was because I felt like he was giving the ending away he used oh. his skills to shut down the program while being pursued by a covert government agency. Ah, true. I think in this case, it might actually have been better just to say, you know, an ex NSA hacker discovers that the US government is secretly using a machine learning program he wrote to silence dissidents. And then right. boom. Yeah. yeah. That, yep. That's, yeah. that's the way to do it. But it's a, it is a great idea. Yeah. Well done, Robert. It's a fun, okay. really fun. All we right. forgot about fun, people. It, this is supposed to be fun. 
Writing screenplays. No, I think you forgot about fun. These are all yeah, fun. Maybe. Yeah. No, no, no. I don't mean these people. I mean the people out there, oh, you out know, there. worrying yes. about all the stuff. It's just have fun. This next one is fun. Um, the next one I'm going to put on my list here is Gina DeAngelis. Where's Gina? Okay, uh, this she is from Wil Williamsburg, Virginia, and um, I'm pretty sure this is a film. When an uptight professor wants to sell the tourist trap historic site she inherited from her famously beloved grandmother, the site's fun-loving ghosts mount a campaign of resistance, forcing her to rescue her employees and their family members before the shenanigans go too far. So I love the concept of this, okay, that like, you know, it's, it's just fun. It's like a fun sort of family film kind of feel to this log line. Um, you know, you know, uptight professor wants to sell the tourist trap historic site she inherited and the ghosts are going to mount a, a campaign of resistance to stop her. It's a mouthful though. She does probably go on a little bit too mm -hmm. much with, you know, forcing her to rescue her employees and their family members before the shenanigans go too far. Um, but I still liked, I don't know, I liked the spirit of it. Uh -huh. Yeah, it, it reminded me a lot of that show, Ghosts. Oh, yeah. And, and so I was like, yeah, okay. Like, um, the, this lady, you know, she, she inherits this historic house from her family and the ghosts mount a campaign of resistance and people get hurt and uh all that so like i it was sort of like oh i've seen it yeah. but who knows like it there could be an appetite for more of that well also because it is it, i happen to know for a fact it is a feature and um yeah. uh you know the idea of sort of like one like almost night in a haunted historic site is a lot of fun but i definitely yeah. see what you're talking about by the way a little name dropping remember danielle pinnock has been on the show several times and she is in ghosts and you can see her there oh nice. okay so moving on to the next one on your list adeep um this one uh i'm always like caveating these things um Stop caveating and read it all right uh, this is from Anais. Is that how you pronounce it? I Anais do. Webster Menuti. Okay. We don't know what city. No city TV series. When okay. a tweet claiming that it's exploitative to have sex with disabled people goes viral, four disabled friends set out to prove society wrong by sharing their sex capade filled summer and beyond. You have to say it one more time yeah. because there's, there's a lot there. It's, it, is a, it is hard to say. Okay. Um, when a tweet claiming that it's exploitative to have sex with disabled people goes viral. Ooh, you know what? That's a little tricky. Four disabled friends set out to prove society wrong by sharing their sexcapade filled summer and beyond. Um, this yeah. is interesting. It's it needs, really interesting. It needs actually it, it's not written perfectly. But um, my my thing is, I would love to see this movie as long as as long as a disabled person, a person with disabilities, like wrote it, because I think that would be really important to um, the point of view. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. So that would be my caveat. Yeah, uh, and it would be a no brainer. I mean, you'd you'd have to, you know. Yeah. You yeah. Yeah. I mean, but last year you could still do whatever you wanted. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> five weeks ago, you could still, certain people can do whatever they want. Um, and I just always have loved the word sexcapade. It's one of my favorite <laughs> weird words, uh, like pop culture words. And so that was like, they cheated because they put that in there. So they're going to get me. Um, so if you want to win next year, pay attention. You're so weird. Okay, so uh, yeah, and I, I also love uh, the the idea that you know week after week we're going to have a new sexcapade. <laughs> actually, yeah, I'm glad 
glad that Anais also put uh, summer and beyond yeah. so that it, the TV yeah. show can keep going on as well. Yeah. Okay, so the next one on the my list, let's see, was JD, but we did that already. So I'm going to go to Jeff Zampino. Oh, who yeah. Makes the list every I know logline episode Jeff I think he won one year too yeah um here we go he's from Las Vegas I I'm was pretty like sure. don't we have to retire his number <laughs> look when you're good you're he's good. a ringer I know but you know and it's so funny too because I think he sent it his in like like an hour before deadline too. So for a second ah, good because man. I'm gonna do it. Mm -hmm. Okay so uh this is a film I'm pretty sure a convoy of yeah. oddball truckers puts the pedal to the metal from L.A. to New York to deliver the, this holiday's must-have toy while dodging a bevy of bumbling bandits intent on swiping their precious cargo. So, you know, we've seen movies where like, yeah. you know, Schwarzenegger and somebody else fight over the precious toy. Like we, yeah. every year yeah. there's like a that's the toy movie. But the mm -hmm. fact that we thought oddball truckers at the center of it yeah you know and bumbling bandits yeah so it's like all of you know, that. yeah we've got like this it's you know a... puts you on the road yeah movie and i loved the the phrasing of it oddball mm -hmm. truckers puts the pedal to the metal holidays must have toy bevy of bumbling bandits the alliteration yeah. is overdone and it's overdone on purpose yes and that i was like you win yeah. <laughs> um, and there's this movie, The Ice Road. Have you seen it yet? Mm -mm, no. It's a, it's a Liam Neeson movie. It's bananas. And it is, it's about these like, uh, these ice road truckers and all this craziness that happens. And I was picturing those guys going up against the, the bad guys in Home Alone <laughs> on the road. And I was like, oh, I want to see that movie very badly. I love it. I love it. Yeah, there's just something, you know, it, it's it just lends itself to chases and and weather it's and yeah, all, all that, all that. And like the, I just I always love the idea that there's always like a, a a trendy toy that everyone has to get, and then within two months of Christmas, everyone has forgotten. It. Yes, like you just got all caught up in it. I hope they, you know, has he written this? I don't Do know, know, Jeff. Okay. Write this. Stop log lining, start writing, dude. Okay. Uh, he's probably written it. I but don't know. yeah, it's that was a couple times, so I hope so. That was on my list. Okay. So. All right. Who's the next person on your list? Who you got? I have did that one. Um what was the next one? I'm trying to Okay. I liked this one. There's a lot of interesting things happening here. Um, so it's Alexander Amanda Minchin. Oh, and uh, sibling co writers. Alexander and Amanda. Yes. Yeah. And uh, it's a short. So I was like, oh, yeah, that's kind of fun that you did that. Like, there's no rule that you can't put a short in, right? No. Um, yeah. Amanda and, even wrote and said, can I do this? And I was like, sure, why not? Yeah, cool. And then, so here's the log line. In this modern take on a silent film, an autistic man's once lonely world takes on, appearance, on the appearance of a classic movie in order to communicate with his hearing impaired date. And I think it could be very interesting if handled properly. Yeah. I think it would be very cool i think it's a, um, a perfect silent a, a perfect short it is you know? perfect I, short I, exactly I'm really good because it's not only a goal a small goal right it's small to goal. get through this date but it's also like this really interesting way to film it right mm -hmm. to exactly. film it like a classic movie yeah um yeah you yeah. sort of you 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 see the artist um of it uh, that movie, which I loved. And, um, yeah, I just think it's, it's, it could be very charming and hopefully they'll, you know, do something with it. The, the only reason it didn't make my list again was in this modern take on a silent film. Right? Oh, you hate that. It's not that I hate it. It's just that 
again, it, like, oh, they, it felt like it crowds the log line. It's like yeah, you're right. the log line itself is an autistic man's once lonely world takes on the appearance of a classic movie in order to communicate with his hearing impaired date. So that was the only reason it didn't make a list, but I think it's an excellent idea. Would you keep, would you keep silent film somewhere in there? And like in place of classic movie? Uh, maybe you're right. Uh, an autistic man's once lonely world takes on the appearance of a classic silent, silent film, film. Mm -hmm. in order to communicate with his hearing impaired date. You're right. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. The silent film is like the, that's like the hook of it really. Yeah. Is, is the device. Um, but yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, so we are moving on to the next person. Oh, I guess on my list. Let's see. Who did I get? And it is, oh, Joe Beatty was next, but I, you already did Joe yep. Beatty. Oh, no, no, yep. no, wait. Joe Beatty wasn't on my list. Oh, it wasn't on your that list. That was, was yours. On my list. Yeah. Sorry, I'm losing my mind. Okay, who was next on mine? It was Levi Isaacs. Okay, let's go there. Levi. Yep. Okay, did you have this one too? This was on my bonkers list. I liked so, it because it was bonkers. Yeah, see, and I didn't know, I don't know why I'm like not putting these up, but um, yeah, I mean, I, I went back and forth on that one many times. Okay, so let me read it. Yeah, well, Levi's yeah. from Cooley City, Washington. This mm -hmm. is a film. While humanity engages in a war for survival, a hopelessly optimistic middle manager at an office supply store must inspire a rebellion with the help of a world-weary laser printer. Mm -hmm. I loved that. I it's love that. Silly. I have no idea how he does it. I don't it. know what it's going to be. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I, I like those. I do like kind of weird movies like that. And I was listening to The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy be, being read by Stephen Fry like an hour before I read this and I was like oh yeah that's like in the same world you know it's awesome can, can I put your vote in on this yeah you can because oh, I, I did I did like it a lot okay all right so yes again while humanity engages in a war for survival a hopelessly optimistic middle manager at an office supply store must inspire a rebellion with the help of a world weary laser printer okay what is your next one Adip Mm hmm. Okay. This was a fr friend of mine, so I'm not sure if I'm allowed to vote for it. Oh, um, sure you can. All okay. these people are my friends. All right. I've worked with so many of them over. Yeah, the that's years, true. So. Uh, yeah. So this is this is Nate Nauert, and uh, it's a one-hour TV series. Yeah, Nate's been in class too. Hi, yeah. Nate. I loved this one. I loved it. It was on my list too. Oh, sweet. Okay, yeah. here it is. In this modern day reimagining of the classic novel, The Phantom of the Opera, a shy prodigy at a performing arts school accepts singing lessons from a mysterious masked boy living in the theater basement, and she quickly spirals into a world of romance, music, and murder. Yeah, so a high school take on Phantom of the Opera. Mm -hmm. And that's it's like why... Riverdale meets Phantom of the Opera. Yeah, oh. it's perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I was, again, like, I didn't need in this modern day reimagining yeah, right. of the classic novel, right? Yeah. But I, if you just take that part off, it's a shy prodigy at a performing arts high school accepts singing lessons from a mysterious masked boy living in the theater basement. And she quickly spirals into a world of romance, music, and murder. So in the pitch, it would be smart to say this is a modern day reimagining yeah. of Phantom of the Opera. That would be really smart. Lead with that mm -hmm. and then say it's about so ah. that we understand what the log line is and then go on to say more. But for the log line competition for me, that's why I was just like, oh, I wish I could just scooch that out because I love this idea. It's the, so good. So if you were, let's say you were not not queering but let's say there's a producer that you know and you have a relationship with them and they're like hey what are you working on and and let's say you're just emailing them this stuff so you're not pitching it pitching it yeah. would you leave that in then in that case absolutely absolutely yeah. but i still might make it more conversational uh -huh. so it's not you're not losing both things i would yeah. say this is a modern day reimagining so that that gets their attention and then uh -huh. i'd have a new log line to uh -huh. say you know it, you know, so that, 
so that you're not smooshing it together. Yeah, but yeah. yes, I agree. It would definitely go into a producer's yeah. Yeah. query. I, sure. I almost texted him and I was like, oh, wait, we haven't recorded it yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was like, it's, it was like an it's really good thing. So, yeah. Yep. Thanks, Nate. Okay. So the next person on my list is Matthew J. Kaplan. Okay. Where's Matthew here? He's from Brooklyn, New York. Okay, mm -hmm. it's a very odd premise, but it's dark. Ready? Uh, yeah. When an African American orphan discovers that she has been adopted for the sole purpose of being an organ donor for her sickly new brother, she must battle her new Caucasian family and escape their old mansion before her life is taken and her lungs are harvested. That was, that's a, a little get out. It's get out. Yeah, if, but it's it's a different take on it. You yeah. know, this is real life. This isn't like something that's supernatural. This is this orphan has been adopted for the sole purpose of being an organ donor for her sickly new brother. You know, and it's there's racial issues here, right? They're they're yeah. um, adopting an African American orphan to save this white brother without thought, and um, it's uh. It's so somehow crazy they've tested the viability of her blood with his and 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 also like if if you do a cross uh racial donation like it can work uh but it fails it can fail at a higher rate if if the people are different races so there's like a lot i i got into like all the science shit of it um <laughs> Because that's what I do. So How I was like, yeah. are you to watch things with? Are you like really annoying? Are you the logic guy? Yeah. You're the logic guy. Yeah, right? I'm logic police. And I, um, you know, I'll save you some money. <laughs> uh, or you'll ruin everything. Why I don't, don't say anything when I'm watching with like uh, other people. I'll just be like, oh, I think it's this to myself. And then move on but i i this is on my bonkers list and i wasn't sure what to do with it um and i think it, it remains on my bonkers list I think. it's 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 um scary it's well written and it's a little bonkers okay yeah. so moving on to the next one on your list <laughs> i liked this one uh there i really like the next few actually um this one is <laughs> this one's kind of crazy but i love i i was into this i would watch this this is lane law lane law from austin texas okay and it's a feature and the log line is when rival police units are trapped in a labyrinth of slaughter and torment by a deranged tactician a SWAT team suspects the nightmare was devised to make them pay for their past sins. Mm. And so I was it's like, kind of like a, a good contained horror. Yeah. Right? It's Saw meets fucking Copland. I don't know. But it... did you just say the F word on my podcast? Oh. How many years have you been on this? I don't know. Jesus. 13, 100. A deep to sigh. God. The FCC Gosh, darn it. is going to come after you. Uh, you just okay. bleep. Just bleep it. Bleep okay. me. Just bleep it. Okay. Yeah, All yeah, right. So, so, so I think this is, you know, when you read this, I like it. I like it better than when I was looking at it on the page. Yeah. It is really cool. I guess trapped in a labyrinth of slaughter and torment. torment at first, I thought maybe that's more of a metaphor. Like I, I uh -huh. didn't know what that, if that labyrinth was, you know, a lot of trouble in various ways or uh -huh. was it like literally like a labyrinth, you know, yeah, like a, right. a maze of things. So uh, yeah, my brain went to kind of all the, the games in, in saw and like you're, you're sort of taken from one weird thing to another, like you get out of this room and then you gotta get, you know, get past this thing. Um, I wasn't sure about deranged tactician. Mm -hmm. I was like, I was like, I'm, I'm like, maybe, yeah. I mean, that is kind of what is happening. 
So I I went back and forth on it, but the thing is, like, a lot of these movies, whether they make the top list or not, like, they're really a lot of these projects are really really good. They are. So, they are really good. You yeah, guys, I want them to know stuff. that. Yeah, you know, we usually talk about this, and and we haven't yet, which is. It's a log line competition. Yeah. We're just talking about the execution of the log line, how it hits us, and the idea, how it's how it's being true to the idea or how it's making us feel. But <laughs> write these movies. This is not yeah, like, any kind of judgment of the movie or the TV show. Like you I'm know? Not, I can't think of any where like, oh, don't don't write that. Yeah. I, I haven't seen that yet. Not you know? yet. Not yet. You know, I think way, way, way back in the day, like I'm talking like over a decade ago, yeah. the only thing I ever put my foot down about, please don't write this, I got so much pushback on and it was um, Baby Fight Club. <laughs> yep. Somebody wrote in about Baby Fight Club and yep. I'm like, you can't have babies in a fight club. You know, I had like little babies of my own at the time. It's tough. And I'm like, oh, you can't do it. And people yeah. were like, no, dude, Baby Fight Club is the best. So... You know, Baby Fight Club is just kindergarten, <laughs> you know? That's yeah. all kindergarten is, like who poops <laughs> in the corner and then people throwing fists. That's true. My next one's a little deranged, too. This was Michael Benedoso. Uh, Did you like this one? Oh, uh, I... That was on, I think that's on my... Uh, it's your bonkers list, my, too. No. Oh, did it? No, it was on my on the fence list okay yeah so michael benedo says from milford connecticut this is a film a catholic fbi detective pairs up with an atheist vatican security officer to catch a serial killer who is murdering american priests in the same gruesome ways as tortured saints so it was a little seven here yep. you know the idea of like okay so we've got another serial killer movie i read a lot of them yes but the to get my attention for a serial killer movie when I've read so many of them, mm -hmm. like that's why I was like, oh, this is good because it's American priests in the same gruesome ways as tortured saints. So I was like, yeah, all right. And also like the, I've seen a lot of FBI detectives mm -hmm. and security mm -hmm. officers, but a Catholic FBI detective with a Vatican security officer. I like this constant sort of discussion and testing of faith that's clearly going to come up as the yeah. movie's being made. And I just felt like it was simple, it was mm -hmm. descriptive, and the hook was there. Yeah. My my biggest question for it, it's not, and it has nothing to do with the quality of the log line, mm -hmm. but it's like, who is going to care about people killing, like, it, as I assume they're Catholic priests because everything in this is Catholic, and it's sort of like <laughs> everything going on with the Catholic Church, it's like... You know, I don't, you know, maybe we want uh, the bad guy to win. <laughs> Wait, people still care when people are murdered. Have we gone this far that we don't oh, care when people are murdered? Oh, we don't care about each other. Anymore, oh, if this year tells us anything. I'm so I'm so worried about you. <laughs> I am so worried. OK, we're going to move on to who's the next person on your list? Uh. I, this was really cool. Um, this is from Jeff Reyna from Redondo Beach. Okay. Jeff Reyna. Okay. Yeah. When a down and out ex Navy diver is put in charge of a vocational prison dive program, his team of hardened inmates is selected for a deadly covert government mission, which will set them free if they are successful. And it was like just different enough. Mm -hmm. where I was like, I haven't seen that. That sounds kind of rad, like diving stuff. We haven't had a diving thing That's in a while. That's true. That's it, true. It was like Suicide Squad, but divers, you know? <laughs> and you know, just to, to go to your point about like, haven't we seen a version of that? Well, we've kind of seen it with, uh, you know, you know, prisoners who have to put out a fire, right? Yeah. You know, have to be firefighters in order to get, you know, yeah. lesser sentences. Same kind of thing, mm -hmm. but this is a completely different world. Yeah. You know, a uh, vocational prison dive yeah, program. Yeah, that's just like, what? Yeah. Even yeah, if yeah. they just made that up, it's awesome. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Okay, it wasn't on my list, but I do like it. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're moving on to next person on my list is, is 
getting to the end of the lists here, mm -hmm. which is not a bad thing. Um, Michael Hager. Um, see, this year I went for a lot of happy ones. Yeah. I don't know. Except I'm usually the cynic in all this, but yeah. I now give you that crown. Okay. <laughs> So the light uh, is gone from my eyes. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not disagreeing. So Michael Hager from Ventura, California, a flying squirrel must overcome his sudden heights phobia to help his scurry, AKA squirrel group mm -hmm. outsmart stupid men who are bent on ridding every single pest from 1890s central park. Mm -hmm. So I just liked this idea of like, I could just see the period feel of it that that 1890 Central Park, yeah. you know, and the flying squirrel and the stupid men who are trying to rid the pests. It felt very, um, you know, Disney's 101 Dalmatians yeah. kind of thing. You know, yeah. I liked it. Yeah, it was on. It was on my um, my. It was on the cusp of going over. I was like, okay. Yeah, I mean, it. it's all there. Yeah. You know, yeah. And I love like the sudden heights phobia. So that gives him that backstory. And then, but he's still got to outsmart these guys. And, you know. It's yeah, like, like, what's he going to do? He can't use his power. Right, right. It's fine. Yeah, find that new power. Okay, so here's the, here's a weird thing too, is that there are two squirrel <laughs> movies in this list, in this overall list, I don't know yeah. if we're going to get to the second one, um, but uh, there is like a squirrel Moment. idea, like every year. There's a <laughs> like people people need to see a squirrel animated or live action movie. They just need to. They're... I love I love squirrels. I think they're fascinating. They attack my place all the time. I just watch them. We've named them all. They're adorable, um, adorable yeah. little rats with tails. Everybody yeah. loves a squirrel. Yep. Okay, what's next on your on your list? Okay. okay. Just want to make sure. I can't remember if I put it all in order. Oh yeah, this one. Um, I I just like this kind of stuff. It's kind of cheating for them to put all these things that I like in a log line. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is Scott from Atlanta. Hey, Scott. And it's, um, his last name is, how come every year I screw this up? I'm just saying Scott from Atlanta. Scott, because I always mispronounce your name. So it's just Scott from Atlanta. You know your last name. It is a feature film. Go for it. Yes. In mid 19th century London, a desperate constable secretly res recruits a controversial occultist to help solve a string of bizarre murders plaguing the upper echelons of the Victorian aristocracy. And I thought it would make a dope TV show also. Ah, I could see that. It has that, that Sherlock kind of vibe. Mm -hmm. um, I love occult stuff, so mm -hmm. it's just sort of, you know, I would, I liked, I would watch that. Yeah, yeah, I think, um, I think it's very well written um desperate constable controversial occultist yeah string of bizarre murders upper echelons of victorian aristocracy absolutely very yeah. good very and good. he secretly recruited this guy so he's like he's keeping his occultist in the shadows mm -hmm. the whole time which i think is kind of fun yeah yeah it's it's very good um the next person on my list is sophia palmero from atlanta georgia she's on my list Okay, so we got mm -hmm. two votes for Sophia. Yep. Okay. All right. So um, this is a queer interracial couple must survive an onslaught of passive aggressiveness, messy mistranslations, and lactose intolerance when they bring their immigrant families together for the holidays. You know, we see every year there's a yeah. there's a family comes home for the holidays yeah. movie and it's, it's filled with, you know, drama or mayhem, right? Yeah. It's hard to yeah. reinvent this. So yes. in your log line, you've got to be as um, as descriptive as possible. Yeah. And that's yeah. exactly what's going on here, yep. right? Yep. Queer interracial, an interracial yeah. couple. Yep. Onslaught of passive mm -hmm. aggressiveness, messy mistranslations, yep. lactose intolerance, 
very well described. It, it kind of like makes you want to read this. I even would, if you think you've read it before, you're going to read yeah, this one. I do want to read that one. The lactose intolerance was chef's kiss. That was perfection because that's so funny. And it's like, oh yeah, that sh that stuff does happen. <laughs> In when like different types of families get together, it's like, oh, we didn't grow up with this. Like, we don't eat dairy. Like, none of our people ate dairy, and none of our people ate fish. And it's like everyone's getting all it because food is so personal. Uh huh. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I I like it. And 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 you know, being a queer interracial couple is hard enough. Right. Right. It's just like and and it is. Uh, for my friends who are who are in those things but um yeah i loved it i wanted to see it so yeah. you gotta write that sophia i want to see yeah. that movie sophia go for it you have our blessing okay who's next on your list uh, let's see is it this one no I guess this is the next one. Um, I don't know why I liked this so much, but I liked it. So this is Thomas Morhoff from Ithaca, New York. Okay. Uh, when an earnest Shea Stadium camera operator witnesses a terrorist attack unfolding, he must save the 1986 World Series with the help of his estranged NYPD daughter. And I was like, whoa, that's almost bonkers it was almost purple on my list that was my bonkers <laughs> i don't know i just kind of like i thought it was kind of fun and uh you know i i gave the estranged thing a pass uh because i was like everyone's estranged right and uh i don't know the world series i love baseball i love terrorist stuff i like that he's a camera operator yeah and i have Ooh. a friend who does that job and mm -hmm. he does see the craziest stuff when he's like panning yeah and so i think i it put me in his point of view immediately and maybe that's why i connected with it so much you know uh, it's so funny having these things on your list just makes me really like them all over again and wish that they were on my list i mean that's how many <laughs> strong log lines yeah. we got this it's, year it's yeah it's an embarrassment of riches that's the thing so. it is it is and the ones that aren't even on our list i think <sighs> by the end of this you're going to find those are really good too. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, really good. Um, the last one on my list is Tim Chip from Buffalo, New York. This is a TV series. Hoping to earn a move to a more prestigious newspaper, an eager reporter catalogs both the normal and paranormal happenings in his small town home where his neighbors have successes to share and dirty secrets to bury. So the reason that I, I thought, oh, this is a strong log line for a TV series is that there are normal and paranormal happenings. Okay, every mm -hmm. week we can see that. Um, uh, successes to share and dirty secrets to bury. Yeah, I like that. Um, you know, and it's just simple. Again, mm -hmm. it's like, it's like, okay, this gives us something to dip into. I would say out of all the others, it doesn't kind of stand out now that I'm reading it because we've had so many like big ideas. Yeah. But this is an idea that still has a hook to it and that could, you know, week after week, we could, we could you know, keep it going mm -hmm. over seasons. So that's why I liked it. Yeah. It, it was not on my list, but I, I get why you like and I really I did like the writing of it I yeah. thought that was really good um, so, did, did, so did, do you did. have any more did we I think I ran out of my 15 what about did you it? uh let's see I I a couple got bumped up because of our conversation so it's like <laughs> you know they got rescued um oh I have one more no okay yes where did it go God damn it. okay I, this just seemed insane, uh, so I liked it. Okay. Uh, this is Paul Zeitman, San okay. Francisco. Oh, let me go there. Paul, go for it. All right. After a botched spell strands her in New Jersey, 
A novice witch's only way home is to find an enchanted scepter ahead of a tyrannical wizard who needs it to seize power. It just sounds fun. Sure. It's just, it, it, it's not like, it's, it's not trying to do anything, you know, create, like, change the world, but it's like, being stranded in New Jersey because of a spell <laughs> is hilarious. Um, and then it's like, oh, she got herself there. And yeah, I like wizards too. Uh, I, but yeah. I guess I wish the adventure was more New Jersey specific. Yeah, you that's know? true. If you're going to have a novice witch stranded in New Jersey, like, like, you know, I'd love for her to have to like, you know, find the best Jersey. What do, what do they make in Jersey that's good? Like, is it pizza or subs or what's a good Jersey food? I don't know. I was born there, but I didn't grow up there. You know, I was born there too and didn't grow up there too. Where were you yeah, born? So, Patterson. Patterson. Yeah. I was I was born in Princeton. So oh. really, Pilar, Alessandra, and Adip Desai <laughs> were both born in New Jersey. And we're just finding this out now. <laughs> I was like, that's weird. It does sound weird. Like, don't uh, yeah. I don't claim it's funny like I don't really claim many uh, any of the places I've lived because it's like do I get to I was a baby I didn't experience but I ha I did visit Jersey a lot because I have relatives there um but yeah yeah I, I think you're right I think that you wanted a little more New Jersey in there <laughs> like maybe <laughs> this is dumb maybe the wizard uh -huh. Is like the mayor of some terrible Jersey town like Patterson or, you know, one of those places. And then it's like, oh, and then it feels like a TV show. <laughs> It'd be really funny. I don't know. This, this is what happens that. when you're that. in a development room, Paul. I apologize. Yeah. This is, um, uh, yeah. yeah. Go write it. Go write it. So let's talk about the, the, um, log lines that we both agreed on okay mm -hmm. so the first one was alan jenkins that got two votes and that was a feature when a woman's estranged father develops dementia he reveals clues to his past life as a spy forcing her to unearth family secrets and solve an international mystery so that was alan's mm -hmm. then we've got another two votes went to Dave mm -hmm. Randon. Um, mm -hmm. This was for a half hour TV comedy. Yep. When two big time male rappers reveal that they've been in a secret romantic relationship, they must navigate their sexuality and competing career ambitions all in the public eye. So that also got two votes. Awesome. Then we go to JD Ellaby mm -hmm. and JD's. Where is it? Here is uh, a feature torn yep. from her parents and placed on a lunar outpost. A courageous 16 year old rallies a group of teenage rebels to take up arms against the mining federation that holds their families captive. Okay, and then we're going to go to Jeff Zampino. Okay. The Zam Man. <laughs> A convoy of oddball truckers puts the pedal to the metal from LA to New York to deliver this holiday's must have toy while dodging a bevy of bumbling bandits <laughs> intent on swiping their precious cargo. Precious cargo. Okay, any other? Oh, okay. And then Levi Isaacs also uh -huh. got two. Got you and me. Here we yeah. go. While humanity engages in a war for survival, a hopelessly optimistic middle manager at an office supply store must inspire a rebellion with the help of a world-weary laser printer. Okay, and then... <laughs> that just makes me laugh. Oh, and then we've got Nate Nauert. Yep. Nate's in this modern day reimagining of the classic novel, La Fantôme de l'Opera. <laughs> a shot, that was bad, right? That's why I translated it, because I was like, I'm gonna step all over this. A shy prodigy at a performing arts high school accepts singing lessons from a mysterious masked boy living in the theater basement, and she quickly spirals into a world of romance, music, and murder. And then yeah. the, the last one that we, oh, no, no, there were two more that were two, both on our list. Yeah. Here we go. We had a lot that were, I think about like half of our lists were yep. the same. Yeah. 
Um, Sophia Palmero, a queer interracial oh, yes. couple must survive an onslaught of passive aggressiveness, messy mistranslations, and lactose intolerance when they bring their immigrant families together for the holidays. And then finally, Tommy, Tommy S, S, which you won me over with. <laughs> um, after the box office triumph of The Empire Strikes Back in 1980, Harrison Ford is recruited against his will by the CIA to find and eradicate a reincarnated Adolf Hitler. And the actor turned spy must achieve this goal while simultaneously filming his next movie, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Oh my gosh. <laughs> How are we ever going to decide? How are uh, we going to decide? No. We are back and we figured it out, but it took us a while because yeah. we liked everything. Mm -hmm. and we decided we're going to go for two prizes. Okay. We're going to, I do this every year. I always say I, know. <laughs> one winner. I can never do just one winner, nope. but nope. sometimes it's a winner and a runner up. This yeah. year, it's two winners. We're going to go for TV and for film. Yeah. Right. Okay. So our TV winner for best log line is David Brandon from Los Angeles, half hour TV comedy. When two big time male rappers reveal that they've been in a secret romantic relationship, they must navigate their sexuality and competing career ambitions all in the public eye. Yay, David. Woo! You will win a copy of the coffee break screenwriter and the coffee break screenwriter breaks the rules and uh -huh. a one hour session with me to talk about pitching this or to brainstorm your next project huh. and we have a second winner right yep second winner and that is jd ellaby from mansfield it. texas it's a feature torn from her parents and placed on a lunar outpost a courageous 16 year old rallies a group of teenage rebels to take up arms against the mining federation that holds their families captive yes just really well structured right yeah. right right torn from her parents placed on a lunar outpost courageous 16 year old rallies a group of teenage rebels takes up arms against the mining federation that holds their families captive it it Stakes just encapsulates Joe. the whole thing yes yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. killer log line way to go jd okay yeah. and you will also win a copy of those books and a one hour consultation with me and i'm very very really looking forward to working with all of you but we also said, oh my God, there were so many that didn't even make the list. So we wanted to like fly through three others <laughs> that that we liked, but weren't on the list. So why don't you yeah. go for it deep? Okay, the first one, it's so simple and I don't know why. Uh, it's just so simple, uh, which I think is the, the fun of it. So okay. it's Patricia Lang from Stockholm, uh -huh. Sweden, and it's a TV series and it's so simple. Fred, a porn star with over 1,700 movies under his belt, struggles to balance sex in the porn industry with his family life. Under his like, belt. Under his belt. 1,700 is such a specific number that I was like, ah, points for that. Um, there you go. There you it's, go. It's so clean, you know, yes. and and you can you can actually kind of you can sort of start to see you see all the conflict, of course. Yeah. Um, anyway, so that was one that I. It's that clean I and yet yeah. dirty. And dirty. Yeah. So this is um, <laughs> another one is Paul A. Rose Jr. One hour TV drama series. Paul's from Los Angeles. In 1945, a Jewish soldier spy and the mismatched team he's forced to lead race to hunt down and recruit Nazi scientists for the United States before agents from their Russian and British allies can get their hands on them. So. Uh, well done with the log line. I can see the race for this. Yeah. You know, very descriptive. What's another one that I, uh, yeah. Can... This one, this one you might, uh, I definitely want to talk with you about, discuss this one. Okay. Um, so this is Lori, Laura Covret mm -hmm. or Covret. Okay. From Marengo, Ohio. It's a film. A grieving mother conspires with the man wrongfully believed to be her son's murderer to seek revenge on the real killers that betrayed them both. Hmm. Interesting. It's like, I was going to ask a, have you seen things like that? Or, you know, that particular kind of anything team with up. Anything with revenge, I've seen a lot of. Yeah. Um, you know, yes, I've seen versions of this. 
which mm-hmm. is why I, I didn't, it didn't make my right. list. Right. Um, but I think that she was very specific, grieving mother, yeah. wrongfully believed to be her son's mother, uh, murderer, um, seeking revenge on the real killers. Yeah. Yeah. I think she did a good job. Um, another one that was fun for me was Steve Darcangelo and Alicia Lomas Gross. This is a short. Mm. Think of Santa Claus getting all the global attention every damn Christmas. The world's Santa equivalents. England's Father Christmas, Germany's Krampus, Iceland's Yule Lads, etc. team up to take down Claus. So okay. that was that was fun. As I, well. That's a short. That's a short. Yep. Yeah. And did you I have love it? a Christmas short? That's what I did in grad school. Very no one cool. wanted to make it. <laughs> Serious people don't want to make Christmas movies. Um, yeah. Anything else that was? My last one is one that I was very interested in. And I, also another one that I want to see if you've seen this before, but this is Todd Curtis from Philly. Oh, uh, yeah. You know what? That was that was another one of my little checklists. Oh, was yeah. It? Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Feeling desperate, he's about to lose everything he has worked for. Marvin, the second coming of Christ, enlists a motley crew of his disciples to help him kidnap Sharon, the third coming of Christ, after she appears and tells the world that Marvin's teachings are wrong. It was really funny. There's so much like, whoa, 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 whoa. It's really funny and stupid. I love it, like yeah. Marvin is the second coming Marvin, of Christ. Sharon the, is the third coming of Christ. The names. It's the hilarious. names sell it. It's, it's 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 really funny in this case yeah i agree the names yeah, yeah. in this actually do work they do if, help i'm going to give a little shout out to my own husband pat we were making fun of him <laughs> he knock his log line in but he meant it in a very sincere way he likes this idea for a drama when an estranged mother discovers she needs a kidney transplant she attempts to reconnect with the down syndrome son she abandoned as a child and, you know, I have actually read a lot of movies about, you know, a, 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 a parent who needs to reconnect with a grown child when they need a, an organ, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I did think this idea of a Down syndrome son, if you abandoned a Down syndrome yeah. son and you have to go back in, it's like all that neglect, Ugh. you know, you can't just go in and be like, oh, sorry, son, you know, let's talk. So I thought yeah. it was really, you know, when I really thought about it, I thought it was nice and complex. So it I is. Com- it a, is a shout out to yeah. my husband, yeah. Pat and, Francis. And I shout out my shout out to Pat is just bravo for sneaking that in there because yeah. that's what I would do. He's a he's a sneaky guy. He yeah. is definitely sneaky, sneaky guy. So um, yeah. I think that, that leads us. We started with him. We're ending with him. But <laughs> I think we got all he's the alpha and omega in. Almost everybody's in. You guys remember there were 85 submissions. There Oof. are a few of you that we have not talked about and you hate us all right now. And I'm really sorry, but here's the thing is um, if, hmm, if you didn't hear your log line talked about in any kind of way, if you've heard <laughs> it in any kind of way, I love you, but it's Christmas. Please, you know, <laughs> please take what we have already. Right. Um, but if you didn't hear it at all, write me and I'm happy to give you a little feedback on the log line. I'm sure it was excellent. Like Adib said, we had a, is it a wealth of riches? Is that what it is? Embarrassment of riches. Embarrassment of riches. That's what it is. Wow. Someone came to me with help on an idiomatic phrase. That's strange. (laughs) I grew up with all the wrong ones. (laughs) It takes this idiot to ask you. (laughs) Thank you, Adeep. Yeah. Okay, so let's do a little plugging. Adeep, um, what should we look for for you, Is whether it's social media or whether it's a project that you're involved in? Um, all the projects that I'm involved in are like in whatever stage of development, so I can't say about, talk about them, but, um, and I'm not trying to be coy, it's just like they're not real yet, you know? Right. Um, yeah, social media, I'm at a deep AADIP pretty much everywhere. Um, what am I doing? Well, I just took a gig uh, doing marketing for, for Roadmap. So, um, you know, they had helped me get my representation. And the cool thing is I get to be creative in like a different way. Mm-hmm. So I'm like flexing my silliness with their brand. So it's like, mm-hmm. it doesn't affect me. And uh so you can keep an eye out for that if you you know if you're an aspiring screenwriter, 
um, yeah, I, it, you know, I'm just writing a bunch of stuff on spec and trying to raise some kids and in a pandemic and, <laughs> you know, Good luck that's with that. kind of it, you know, uh, hopefully in 2022, I'll have fun things to announce. You always have new things to announce every year. Like every year <laughs> that you're on here, your bio just gets, gets it, fatter and fatter. It, it does get weirder and weirder. Well, I'll, I'll have three shows come out in 2022. Yeah, no, you're kidding, <laughs> so, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we'll have yeah. lots to talk about. Yeah. Adif, thank you so much for being yeah. here. I want to remind everybody to go to onthepage.tv where you can check out classes. So, for example, if you like the little log line lesson right up front, um, you'll get that and a whole lot more in the online classes um, that take place here once a month. Uh, the next one coming up is Rewrite Techniques. It is a four part class, three parts where you're really digging into story and character and dialogue and becoming a better writer while you're looking at these elements. Mm -hmm. And then the fourth class is with Lee Jessup and uh, Lee is a career coach and she's going to be talking all about the business of writing TV and film. So yeah. love to see you there. Again, go to onthepage.tv to check out that class and more. Yeah. Thank you again to Adeep Desai. Yeah. Have really a good end of the year. Yeah, yeah, you too. And uh, yeah, hit the eggnog hard. Hit the egg. Well, you yeah. don't have to tell me twice. <laughs> Thanks to all of you for listening. All have right. a good writing week. <laughs>